The Tower of Pisa is a bell tower, also known as a campanile, designed in the Romanesque style. It is known worldwide as the Leaning Tower of Pisa, with now about a four degree lean due to foundational problems. During the construction phase, uh, construction workers around the third tier noticed that the tower slightly started to tilt and shift a little bit. The tilt, needless to say, became a global sensation and an icon. People were quite literally obsessed with it. And long story short, the reason it leaned in the first place is because of foundation problems. So today I will be going over how geotechnical engineers and civil engineers and foundation designers all saved the leaning tower of Pisa from its collapse. Hey guys, it is your girl Nat here. I am the creator behind Unraveling Architecture. Please consider joining our Discord, supporting me further on Patreon, all that good stuff. And we'll just get right into today's video. If you haven't seen my video about why buildings don't fall, basically you can really understand in that video that foundational design is absolutely critical for the success of any building. I talk about foundation and soil conditions a lot in that video. I wanted to make a secondary video explaining why it's tilting and how they fixed it. But before we get into how they solved the problem, it's actually a really good idea to consider the tower's history. The solution is a little complicated, and keep in mind this is still a great solution. They did the best that they could, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa is constantly studied in civil engineering schools, geotechnical engineering schools all that good stuff. Basically, they analyze the behavior of Earth's natural materials. They are constantly analyzing soil conditions, doing calculations, and they also help resolving structural problems, foundational problems. Now, of course, the Tower of Pisa clearly made a connection to the soil upon which it sits and we understood from this video that buildings are constantly emitting loads and transmitting forces back down into the foundation and the foundation its job is to provide an equal and opposite reaction to ensure that nothing is moving well clearly the tower started leaning shortly after and even during construction so something was off here can you guess what it is long story short for a structure to work foundations have to meet downward forces with opposite and equal reaction forces. And in case you didn't know, soil is way more than just dirt. Soil conditions are extremely complex and there are so many variables that are studied in soil. But did you know that the soil itself can fail? <laughs> now, various types of soil spread across our planet have various densities and also different bearing capacities. If a building is too heavy for soil, it quite literally means the soil cannot bear it, meaning it can't support it. And because this bell tower is extremely tall, made with very classic materials, it's extremely heavy. The dead load is insane. So the structure began actually leaning southward because the soil could not bear it. It could not handle the load. And the foundation itself was not big enough, was not strong enough, was not widespread enough. Typically during this time, they used pillars for their design, but I guess they were trying out something new and the foundation of the the Leaning Tower of Pisa is three meters deep. The substructure is three meters deep. You know how shallow that is for a foundation design. That is insane for a tower nonetheless. This is such a short, short foundation. I, oh my God, I still can't even wrap my head around it that it's only three meters deep, crazy. So Pisa actually got its name in 600 BC from a Greek word meaning marshy land like the Greeks just knew <laughs> about the soil conditions themselves. Generally speaking, the soil underneath the Tower of Pisa is pretty muddy. There's a lot of wet sand in it. So imagine yourself building a Tower of Pisa at nine stories tall at the beach on sand. It's just, it would fall over, it really would. When the tower completed its construction phase, the tower was only leaning 1.6 degrees, which really isn't that 
much in comparison to how much it did end up leaning before they realized that they had to fix it ASAP. Another thing that we cover a lot in static structures is called shear stress. Shear stress causes one object to slide over another. Now why am I talking about shear stress all of a sudden? It's because when you are calculating the bearing capacity of soil, shear stress plays a crucial factor in how much weight it can bear or cannot. So the soil wasn't strong enough, there was a lot of shear stress present with this additional weight on top of the soil and it, it tilted it tilted in 1989 the civic tower of pavia actually collapsed and it had similar conditions as the leaning tower of pisa four people died it was catastrophic and it was very all of a sudden there were a lot of foundational issues and there were series of tests to determine if it was the structural materials itself that caused it the soil conditions all that good stuff but they actually couldn't determine it and narrow it down to just one component. It probably was a mix of everything together. So by 1990, the Italian government was extremely concerned because at this point, the Leaning Tower of Pisa was leaning by 5.5 degrees. Now, at this point in time, architects and engineers were using computers a little bit more and were more advanced in trying to fix it than for the past 800 years of Pisa's birthdays. Now, I should point out that it didn't take until 1990 for the Italian government to be like, hmm, we should probably fix the foundation. There were several attempts to actually fix the foundation of the Leaning Tower of Pisa over its 800 years. However, a lot of the times these fixes would take soil samples and it would ca actually cause the tower to even lean more. So with very advanced calculation abilities and computer aids, they determined that the tower would collapse at 5.44 degrees. Now considering that the tower was already leaning 5.5. Everyone was freaking out. They had no idea what to do and nothing was working. And like I mentioned, as engineers kept trying to take soil samples from the foundation, it only caused the tower to lean more. And they just wanted to avoid another episode where people lost their lives because of a building collapse. So the solution to it all was that they ended up digging diagonal tunnels to suck out a bunch of soil underneath the Pisa foundation on the north side. So this allowed the tower to kind of settle in because there was now a gap and it, it needed to make more contact with the soil on that side. And the other thing they did, quite literally not even joking, to further increase the contact between this raised foundational side with the soil they added a bunch of weights to the structure. So 600 tons of weights were added to this side of the structure that was leaning so the weights would have been here and they connected them with a bunch of steel cables and they actually reduced the tilt degree. So now the leaning tower of Pisa rests comfortably at a four degree tilt. It is estimated that this tilt will be okay for another couple hundred years. Of course, they couldn't just rectify the entire foundation and lose the tilt as there are so many tourists that go to Pisa. It is one of those things that you just cannot fix because it is an iconic structure. People tend to be drawn to some architectural failures like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. People, I think, were also drawn to... I forget what it's called. It's a bridge. It might have been the Tacoma Narrows Bridge or something that failed. There was another bridge that people would drive their cars on because it it literally moved with the wind. So long story short, people are obsessed with architectural failures and structural failures because it's something fun to see. I guess when you see buildings always erected straight up, seeing something that is abnormal kind of draws people to it, especially considering the Leaning Tower of Pisa was constructed so long ago and has such a unique history to it. So that's it for today's video. My name's Natalie. Once again, if you want to subscribe, it really helps me out. Like this video. Also consider joining our Discord. We are growing strong and steady and I love interacting with you all. If you have any video suggestions that you would like for me to cover, please let me know in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.